So from the previous video, we have our boundaries drawing correctly. The only issue with doing so is that we had to duplicate information. For example, there are two vertices sitting right here because the way we tell OpenGL to draw these lines is connect this vertex with this vertex. And then OpenGL, here's another vertex here, and here's a vertex here. Connect those two vertices together. That makes this line right here. And then, oh, by the way, let's put another vertex here and connect that with this vertex here. And so we have a duplication here. And we'll also have a duplication here because we want to connect this vertex with that vertex. And so we end up duplicating that vertex as well. A lot of data duplication. And if you could imagine when we get into 3D graphics and we're drawing large models, we do not want to do all that duplication. But the, the, here we go. Connect that vertex to this vertex and this one to that one and this one to that one, this one to that one. Where is the duplication? Well, these two vertices are duplicated. Negative one, negative one, zero, 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 zero. These two are duplicated. They're laying on top of each other. Zero, zero, negative one, negative one, zero, zero. These two as well. And then these two are duplicated. Uh, all, all to make the boundary. So I had to essentially double the amount of vertices I had just to draw that boundary. I don't want to do that. Right, I want to remove that duplication. And so uh, a different approach, which we do, is to number our vertices. Let me actually, I'm going to remove the duplicate ones. Hopefully I don't break this down. Oops, sorry. Okay, now we have just four vertices and doesn't look like we have any duplications. Now what I want to do is number these vertices and it's just, you can think of it like a zero based array, zero, one, two, three, like so. And now I want to say, hey, OpenGL, connect this vertex with this one and connect this one with this one, connect this one with this one, and then connect that one with that one. All right now we're not limited to doing that. We could say connect that one to that one or this one to that one or any way we want to, but we just have to give OpenGL a sequential list of indices is what we call There's these. They're indices into this vertex array. We need to give OpenGL uh, an array of numbers, indices, and OpenGL will connect the dots for us. So here we go. Let's, let's, let's make some data. GL, use short. Okay, you can use any integral type here. But use short, I found, is the most generally used one. Though, if you're not if you're not going to have large indice values, then you probably don't need the two bytes. Remember, a short is two bytes. Maybe you could do it with a one byte number. If you're going to need to have extremely large indices, which I doubt that would ever happen, you could have an unsigned int. Anyway, GLU short indices. It's an array, and I want to connect dot zero to dot one, dot one to dot two, dot two to dot three, and dot three to dot zero. And now that we have this data, just like we did with both of these vertices, we have to send it down to OpenGL, so OpenGL will store it in its memory. And the way we do that is through a buffer. All right, just like we did with all these buffers in the previous video, we now need to create another buffer for these indices. And I'm gonna call these, actually to be consistent with what we have up here, I'm gonna call it boundary indices like so. Control shift U to uppercase that I. And then the rest is pretty much the same as we did with the the vertices. I say GL gen buffers. I need one buffer and then I need to store the result in an ID. So I'll just put that ID next to these other IDs. GL U int U int boundary index buffer ID. Control minus to go back to where we were at. Boundary, oh, address of boundary index uh, buffer ID. Right, just like we did in the previous videos, let's generate a buffer. And then let's bind to that buffer, gl bind buffer. But the binding point is not going to be an array buffer. Remember, we have, how many buffers do we have? We had the buffer for the ship vertices, buffer object, ship vertices, buffer object. We have the boundary vertices, buffer object. Now I'm creating another buffer for the boundary indices, buffer object. And we have, before we were just working with one binding point, this GL array buffer. And I'll put this as the array buffer 
binding point. And it looks like the last buffer we bound to it was the boundary vertex buffer ID. So I'll just draw that line there. And let me just do green here to separate. These are the buffer objects and these are the binding points. And the binding points are just kind of a logical thing. It's a number, it's an enum, it's an index. It's it's just, hey, when, when I tell you GLRA buffer, I'm talking about this buffer because that's what I've bound to it. Well, with the indices, we actually have another binding point. Let me just type it in here for you. GL element array uh, buffer. All right, let me draw that in here. Uh, let's see, element array buffer. An element means the indices. I guess I should call them elements instead of indices because OpenGL calls them elements, but well, you'll see the term indices more often in industry. So bind to that point, to that binding point, I want my boundary index buffer ID to be bound. So then that will connect this buffer to that binding point right there. And now I know, just like I did with buffer data right here, I need to send our indice data down. So let's do that. I'm going to say GL buffer data. I want to send data down to the buffer that is bound at the element array buffer binding point, which would be that buffer we just created. We connected those dots right here via this function call. And then the size will be size of boundary indices and then the data will be boundary indices that's the pointer to our actual data uh, remember compile time array names or pointers to the data and here's the actual data in our program image and then the usage well we're not going to change this at all after we've sent it down so static draw go ahead and make some optimizations if you want to OpenGL. And then we'll leave this buffer bound to this element array buffer binding point. Now let's go down to here. When we said GL draw arrays and we said lines, that's OpenGL and it, OpenGL just says, oh, okay, I'll connect the dots. But then we have to duplicate all the dots like I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Now instead of saying draw arrays, I want it to draw element element draw elements and elements again are indices the mode well it's still lines how many are there there's going to be eight the type well now, now here's where we have to describe our data again to OpenGL remember when we were describing the vertex attribute data to OpenGL we had to say a trip pointer it's three floats per vertex and now I'm gonna say well the indices are GL unsigned shorts. Remember we used for the indices we said GLU short which is a type def for unsigned short. So we're describing our data to OpenGL because when we sent the data down to OpenGL again as we talked about in the previous video I just said here's some data copy this many bytes from this address and I'll tell you about that data and what it means later. All right, but at this point all OpenGL is doing is copying the bytes. It doesn't know what that data means. So we're going to say, hey, we want uh, eight indices connected. They're unsigned shorts. And here we give a pointer to the indices. And if we want to give it like an offset into our buffer, we could. Um, I'm not going to do an offset, so we'll just say zero. And now when I say draw elements, draw elements looks at the buffer that's bound to the element array buffer binding point and says, oh, this is the buffer bound. I will draw these indices. So let's control F5, run this, and if all is well, we will see our boundaries again. But now we didn't have to duplicate the information, and, and we're good. So in the next videos, I want to actually bounce our ship off of these boundaries, and I want to bounce it correctly. And we'll learn a lot about dot products. Yeah. Dot products have to become a second nature thing to you if you're going to become a game programmer. And so we'll do some dot products and under explore and understand uh, how we can use those in our future programming.